In this lecture, we are looking at functions and scope in JavaScript used in QML. Here we are in Qt Creator. We're going to do the usual and create our project. We're going to call it functions and scope demo. Hit next. Choose our desktop kit and finish. Let's change this to functions. We are going to do the usual, create a rectangle inside, give it an ID, give it a width of 300, give it a height of 100, put it in the center, and give it a color of blue this time. On the root level, I want to define a function that computes the minimum of two numbers. And it's going to return there is a math object that is available to you globally in JavaScript. And we can use it to compute the minimum of two numbers. And we are just going to pass in A and B here. It's going to return the minimum. Okay, so what we can do now is use this function to compute, for example, the width of this rectangle. We can say minimum, for example, 300 and 400. This is just a silly example of showing you how you can use a function. It's really not that useful here. But the point is to show you how you can use functions in QML. Run the application. Nothing is going to change. It's going to be 300. But if, for example, you pass in 500 here, let's do a component on completed signal handler and console log the width of this rectangle so that we can prove this. We use its ID. Let's run the application. It should show 400, and it's 400 here. So our function here is working correctly. One thing I want you to know is that the function that you define on the root level is callable anywhere in that element. Okay, for example, we can call this function here in rectangle. We can call this function here in component on completed. To prove that to you, we're going to take out this thing here and say man. The same thing we did there. 500, 400, run the application, it works the same, okay? You can call this function anywhere. But if we put a mouse area, for example, here, I'm going to show you something uh, that is not very obvious. Let's make it fill the parent. And when it's clicked, we're going to do something as usual. We want to give this an ID. And uh, define a function down here. So we're going to say function. And it's going to say something to the console. For example, hello world or hello there. This is better. When we click here, we're going to say say message. Okay, we define a function in this mouse area and then we call it when we click on the mouse area. If we run the application, it is going to work as usual. Click here, hello there. This is a message that is coming from this function here. But one thing I want to show you is that you cannot call this say message function anywhere outside without using the ID of this mouse area. So for example, in the component on completed method, we cannot say, say message. Okay, you see that it's not even recognized, but even if we run, because sometimes Qt Creator doesn't recognize even valid stuff, mm -hmm, say message is not defined. To be able to call this method that is nested in another sibling element, you have to use the ID. So if we use the ID of this mouse area, let's copy and put it here and I put a dot 
you're going to see that it is recognized. I think Qt Creator is even going to recognize that. Okay, you see that it recognizes it and we have autocomplete available. Okay, if we run, when the component is loaded, we're going to see the message here, hello there. Even if we didn't click on this blue rectangle, it is coming from this place when the component is loaded successfully. I hope this drives home the point that to call a method, it either has to be defined in that element, for example, here in the mouse area, we define this method and we called it, okay? And any other child items of mouse area here are going to see this function, but you cannot call this method outside this mouse area. To be able to call a method, it has to be defined in the root level of the parent item or inside that particular element where you are calling the method. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to call it and you're going to have to use IDs to target the element where the method is defined. This is what we mean when we say function scope. It really means where we can use this function without having an error. Okay, this covers all we set out to do in this lecture. In the next one, we're going to see how we can import some external JavaScript code and use it in our QML file here. I'll see you in the next lecture.